Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. It is Mike, your host of Insider Secrets. It must be Tuesday afternoon. And I am joined today with my guest, Matt Tepke. Matt, would you tell the listeners exactly what we're going to talk about on today's episode? We are talking about integrity, intentionality, and the real estate business. The business, the one aspect of business that I've seen that people are constantly trying to improve, not only in their uh, business life, but in their personal life as well. So really excited to talk about this today, Mike. It's awesome, Matt. You know what? And, and I know everybody's going to want to tune in and listen in because we're going to talk about some things today, just like you mentioned, that don't get talked about often enough. So glad you're here, Matt. Look forward to seeing you inside. All righty. Let's go. Welcome to this week's edition of Insider Secrets, the show that turns multifamily investing into reality. Each show, we interview guests who are seasoned professionals actively closing and managing real estate deals. Your host, Mike Morawski, has more than 30 years of multifamily real estate investing and property management experience. Mike is the founder of My Core Intentions and has been involved in over $285 million of transactions focuses on helping you create short-term cash flow and long-term wealth. Here's your host, Mike. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is Mike, your host of Insider Secrets. Must be Tuesday afternoon. Hey, listen, just so you know, and I want everybody to give this a try, but if you have Alexa, tell Alexa to play Insider Secrets. And what's going to come up is the most recent recording of Insider Secrets podcast. I'm excited about that because we are on all the platforms across the board now, thanks to my marketing guys. Insider Secrets is brought to you by My Core Intentions. And the one question I always ask my listeners is, hey, have you been thinking about your intentions? Do you know exactly where you're trying to go? Did you get up this morning, sit down, spend a few minutes just planning out your day, figuring out you were going to make for calls today, sales calls, the sales you were going to make, the investments you were going to try and uh, buy or walk, the due diligence you were going to do. What was your intention? Listen, I really believe that as an investor, as a multifamily professional, somebody who supports that investor in the industry, we all have to be intentional about our actions and what we do. And I know that our guest today, and I'm really excited about our guest, Matt is uh, going to talk to us about intention and some things that he's working on. Hey, Matt, why don't you say hi real quick before I introduce you? Hey, keep preaching, man. I love it. Hey, guys. I'm excited to be here. And I'm feeling motivated today, and I love it, Mike. I like that. Nobody ever really calls me a preacher. I like that, Matt. Thanks. Hey, uh, Matt is a real estate and cannabis expert entrepreneur. And listen, I'm going to tell you what, this will be a very interesting podcast for us today, maybe a little bit outside of the box, but you guys know me, I like to be outside of the box. Hey, in 2012, Matt was the Rookie Realtor of the Year. So in 2015, Matt got a master's degree in real estate from Texas A&M. In 2019, he started Stone Oak Property Management. In 2020, he started Longhorn Construction. Hey, Matt is a value-add entrepreneur that seeks a, to shine a light on what is possible and to help others grow while he continues to grow. He grew up in Round Rock, Texas. It's an opportunity city. Currently, he has two boys and is married to his wife, Lexi. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. I'm honored to be here. I'm feeling jacked up and motivated today, so I'm ready to get after it with you. Obviously, we know that you're busy, Matt, because we got you in the car this afternoon sitting on the side of the road somewhere. So that's a good <laughs> thing when we stay busy, right? Hey, listen, one thing that I like to always ask my guests uh, when I bring them on is, and there's a couple, but this first question is, in one word, Matt, how you would describe yourself both personally and professionally driven. So, Matt, what do you think drives you? I feel very blessed that I was introduced to real estate at an early age. A single mom raised my brother and myself, and she started buying real estate. She was literally cleaning houses, and then over time, she started owning properties. And so I feel that I was lucky, fortunate, blessed to be introduced to the power of real estate and what it can provide. And it's changed my mom's life. It's changed my life. It's going to change my kids' lives. And I'm passionate about getting that message out. Honestly, a lot of people don't think that they can get involved. They think it's not for them. 
And I feel blessed. I feel like I have something to share with others. And it just drives me to keep pushing forward. I'm a very positive, optimistic guy in general. But when I see people that have every excuse in the book and they continuously build and grow and, you know, create assets and net worth, it, it fires me up that it, it truly is possible. I, I really believe it takes time and consistency, but anybody can get involved in real estate and that can change your life. And I love my life and I, I contribute a lot of it to real estate. And I simply want to uh, allow others to have the same feeling because I really do care. And it just drives me to keep pushing forward every day. That's really awesome. I love that. And I love where you're going with that. You and I have had a couple of chances to talk here over the last few months. And we run across each other in some of the circles that we run in. And it's interesting. You're always full of energy. You're always full of excitement. Matt, I, I want you to go back and talk a little bit about your backstory and, and that growing up piece. Hey, well, here's what I really want to know is your mom still doing real estate today? Not as much. She owns property. She watches older people and takes care of them as, as something that she's passionate about and cares about. But I think she has about 25 single family homes. So she's still involved, but she's not actively really trying to grow them. And she raised my brother and I, two boys, literally cleaned houses, started working at the construction industry and bought one or two a year over 10, 15 year time span. And my mom sacrificed everything. She was always on her phone. She was up at 4 a.m. every morning. And I, I still don't really fully understand how somebody could do that. I have two kids right now and a wife and Raising these two kids with the wife is hard, right? Uh, for both of us. And she says, honestly, I, I don't really know. I guess we'll blur. And what you realize is people step up when they have to. And we can accomplish a lot more than we think. And you survive. Honestly, it's amazing to think of a woman in the construction industry with two kids all on her own. My, my dad's a great guy, uh, but he wasn't around early on in my life. And he came back in later on and I forgive him and I love him and everything. But my mom gets all the credit for what she did. And I think being around that drive, seeing what she did just stuck in me hardcore and didn't give me any reason to have any excuse. It showed me what hard work and commitment and sacrifice was. And also, like I said, I was blessed to see the results of it because she's done. She's retired. She won the game yeah. and she deserves it. We didn't go on vacations. We didn't, we got waters when we were out to eat, but she had 15 houses and it's not like these houses were making her money every month. They were growing in value. They made a little bit to cover themselves. And that's a separate topic, but I feel like people are scared to buy real estate because they're like, I don't see how it's going to make money. I don't see how uh, it's going to change my life, but you get in there and, you, and even if, and I'm not promoting this for everyone, but let's say a house is going to be negative $200 a month cash flow. I'll go figure out how to make $200 tomorrow and cover that. And I'm going to own this asset. And it's a sacrifice and the, the thought of, I'm going to figure this out no matter what it takes. And when you put yourself in that position, then you're just constantly moving forward and, and figuring out new ways to succeed. And there's no such thing as problems, only solutions in my mind. Yeah. Hey, you said a bunch of really good things. And, and first of all, I want to just go back for a minute and, and say, hey, 25 single family homes, that's a good portfolio. Well, there's got to be some cash flow there. So I wouldn't, I would never not look at that and say, wow, somebody really knows what they're doing. So good for her. And I liked what you said about buying one or two a year. What's interesting is I used to follow this real estate trainer when I first got in real estate and he would say, buy your best listing every quarter. I didn't do it every quarter, but I did do it a couple of times a year. And I'll tell you what, it adds up quick. And plus, if you buy the best one, you create some good cash flow. So good for her. Yeah. And I believe, Mike, I really believe in, hey, I don't know everything. Someone could prove me wrong. But if you want it bad enough. If you want to buy a house a year, you can. Yeah. And it, it might not be the first year. It might be the second or third or fourth. But you don't go out to have drinks. You don't go on vacations. You don't do this or that. You can buy a house. And if you don't have that capital to save up, you can figure out how to wholesale it and find partners. But the knowledge and education is obviously huge. And that's why, man, it is for everybody. And people just don't realize that. Anyone that wants to do it and wants to succeed, I'll put everything I possibly can into helping them. What's frustrating is when people say they want it, but they don't really want it. Right. And maybe it takes time to get there, but 
if I'm going to take time out of my day to go sit down with someone, I'm hoping that they're truly going to go take that advice and implement it. And I want to sit down with them again. I don't yeah. want to sit down with you one time and tell you what to do and never hear from you again. We're, we're both just wasting our time. Right. Hey, you know, what's really interesting is it, you really are having this conversation about work ethic, what you learned growing up and how you behave today. And what's really funny is people will tell you something. Action speaks so much louder than words. So when we watch people, somebody might say, oh, yeah, I want to get it or I want to educate or I want to go buy this. But if they don't do it, really, your actions are really what talk about who you are and how you behave. I had this little quote, Mike, I don't know if you like this or not, but you heard talk is cheap. Yeah. I'm like, man, talk's expensive because it's just a massive waste. Yeah. You know, actions where you get the value. For sure. Hey, it's funny. I always tell my kids, I know it's expensive, but you got to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. That's the other thing. Cause that's where I get jammed. Can up. I hit you? I want to hit you with one more that I learned yesterday from somebody. All right. Uh, and it took me a second to get this, but he said, if you want money, ask for advice. If you want advice, ask for money. Interesting. Wow. There, that's a tongue twister, but that's a good one. It is. Sure. And it takes a second, but it, but it's real. Yeah, for sure. That's good. We got to keep learning. You mentioned education. You mentioned knowledge. And what do you do for yourself to continue to educate yourself? And another question that I would ask you is, how much money do you put into your education on an annual basis? I think everyone can always continue to learn. For my background, I've been in the real estate business for 12 years. I started when I was 17. And for the first five or six years, it was all education for me. I found mentors. I sat down every day uh, for an hour with anyone I could, learn real estate. I typed in the word real estate Google three times a day, read every article that popped up. I got my master's degree from a and got my appraiser's license. I wanted to learn how to value properties. I worked at an apartment doing leasing. My whole thing was I want to learn as much as I can about every aspect of real estate. And then I want to go put it all to use. And so I still have stuff to learn. I read books. I like history. I'm reading about Ben Franklin right now and Alexander Hamilton. But about five years ago, I said, man, I think I got it figured out. I'm always going to continue to learn. And my mindset was, this is a networking game. This is about meeting people and building relationships. And so I stopped getting into too much of the technical I got the master's, in my opinion, is one of the highest levels of, of understanding real estate from an education side. And I said, I'm going to just go meet as many people, three to five coffees a day, and then stay in touch and then figure out how do I add value for these people. And it's worked very well. And so now I just believe it's just all about uh, getting in front of people, adding value, staying in touch, playing the long game. And I guess for me, learning is like, how do I get better at these meetings? I just hired an assistant, you know, full time a couple months ago. How do I get better at uh, training and working with an assistant? How do I become a better listener to find out what people really want to do? So I guess more for me, I'm the personal development at this point. How do I become better myself? And I just left a meeting with a lady and she said, I've done all kinds of industries, technology. She was on TV. And she said, real estate seems the one where everyone's constantly trying to improve uh, themselves personally as well. I never heard that. I've never been really in any other industry at a high level, but that's really cool to hear. And and I know that's true about real estate. I, I don't know if that's untrue about other ones. Uh, but when I think about people that are in the tech business, I, I love tech, but maybe they're not as focused on personal development on some way. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but that's what she told me from her experience. I think that's a great line, man. That's something I wrote it down because real estate's the one industry people are always trying to improve their self in. And I think that's so true. Here's the other thing that you were alluding to and relationship, right? You said, hey, I go meet these people and then I stay in touch. This is a relationship business that we're in. The more we get to know somebody, and today it's easier to do that because of social media and simple marketing like that. But it's such a relationship business because if I help you grow, you help me grow, and we wind up doing something together, right? Maybe we help straighten a deal out. Maybe we do a deal together. Maybe we manage. Who knows what it could be ever, but it's such a relationship business. And it might not be you and I, but you may know somebody. I may know somebody. So I'm a huge connector. And that's what I love doing with people is adding value. How do I add value? 
to somebody else's network, whether it's through education or whether it's through just helping them improve. I agree. And if you stay, I think it, it would be you and I, but a matter of time. And for me, it's the people that are serious and have that exact same approach that you talked about. That's all it is. It's a matter of time until we do something together. Maybe yeah. it's 50 years, man. That's the game. Play the long right. game. Right. And maybe 50 years from now, we find an amazing deal or whatever it may be. And I just think too many people are short-sighted with it. And they're like, what am I going to get out of this now? Mm. And when you elevate yourself to understand there's another realm, there's another playing field going on, you really set yourself apart and it becomes fun. You're getting the results of what you're building over time. Everyone loves that. Yeah. Let me ask you, I'm going to ask you a question that I would ask somebody if they were, if I was talking to them about coaching them. So if I was talking to a prospective coaching client, I would ask them this question. So I want to see how you would answer this. What's the biggest stumbling block that you find right now in your life that's holding you back from moving to the next level? The thing that I struggle with is I spend a lot of time networking. Like I said, that's my full-time job at this point. And I'm always working deals. I want to give my time to people. I really do because I've taken time from people over the years and it's benefited me and I want to help others, but I shouldn't do that. And there's something I have to figure out because it's super frustrating for me when I want to go help someone and I don't find out they're serious. And so I haven't figured out how to say no, because I struggle with this because Maybe they're not ready for the advice. Maybe it takes the third meeting. And I understand that back to the long game, but I can't continue to give everything I have to everybody. I have to focus on myself in some aspects and say no, but I don't want to be that guy. I hated that guy when I was you know, trying to get some advice and he's like, no, nah, sorry, never going to do it, man. And especially when I was like, I know I can help this guy. I know I will, but I stayed consistent. And some of those, I got the meeting. Some of them I didn't. But I don't want to be that person. And I don't know the answer here, but I can't go meet with everyone all the time. I can't, but I care. And so trying to figure that out is probably my biggest challenge. Would it be fair to say that time management might be an issue? Maybe. Yeah. The couple of conclusions that I've had recently, which I haven't implemented, was like, I don't need to go have an hour of coffee from have a five minute phone call and Mm -hmm. figure out a system that says, hey, I know you're saying you want to get involved in real estate. Go do these five things and call me in exactly 60 days. And then I figure out who's serious. And if I was on the flip side of that as an entrepreneur, I'd be all over. I'd love it. Give me a little roadmap. I can keep getting milestones. So yeah, I think it's implementing a structure that I can put in place to still give people what I want to give them. So see, that's probably where you and I are a lot of what you just said. Hey, give me a little roadmap. I'll go do it. I'll come back and tell you how I did. I hired a coach three months ago and he said, okay, here's what I want you to do this week. And I went out and that week I I did more than what he uh, challenged me to do or encouraged me to do. He goes, man, people don't do that. So see, that's where you and I are different, where we'll go that extra mile. We'll do that work because we know that success leads clues, right? So somebody else's results, we can duplicate their results by putting in the action. I always say massive action equals massive results. So what could you do for yourself? And more importantly, what could you do for your boys and Lexi that would help you balance your time more and give you more quality time with your family, but yet still not jeopardize your business or take away from your business? Yeah, I think it's that, the five, 10 minute calls to start conversations, give someone an action list, and then talk again later when they're real or when you realize if they're real or not, because nine out of 10 people will drop off. So that's my thing. And then I'm pretty big recently on just scheduling everything. Like I schedule time with the boys. It's on my calendar two or three times a week. There's a two hour window, two times a week. I got a two hour window for a bike ride. I hang out with the family outside of that as well, but that's like the intentional phones up. I'm here. And it's a blessing. I heard this on someone's podcast, but you schedule important things in your life. Why not schedule everything? Why not schedule when you exactly need to go to the gym or when you need to hang out with your kids or when you need to have some free time, put it all on the schedule. Yeah. That's just what work, works for me personally. Yeah. Good for you. I think that's really important. And, and I think that even there, it's like an eye opening thing. And you said it, you've said the word a couple of times, but intentional. I started this whole thing by talking about intentions. 
And if we're not intentional about what we're trying to do, I think that we stumble, we stick our toe in the mud. Hey, talk to me a little bit about integrity. Talk to me a little bit about acting ethically and how in your business, how in your life, those two things show up. Good timing, man. I had a, <laughs> a true ethical dilemma the other day. Okay. So I have a listing property I'm selling here in Austin for $650,000. It was a property. It's actually a state senator. So it's a good connection. That's somewhat irrelevant, but cool for me. And I found a buyer that did not have a realtor. So they said that I could represent them. So I was going to get a full 6% commission instead of 3%. It's a pretty big commission on that one. Owner said he was good with 630,000. I was going to surprise him. I got the buyer to agree to 640. And I was going to go back and say, hey, I got you more than you wanted. And in my mind, I'm getting the double commission. Let's roll. Had a, a contract signed from the buyer. I sent it to the seller. He hadn't signed yet. Offer comes in at 700,000 from another realtor. So this owner would make 50 grand more, but I'll make half on the commission. He was just ready to sign it. And so I thought about it. I'm like, man, that double commission crossed my mind. He's ready to sign. It's a higher price than he actually wanted. And I said, no, what would I want done to myself? What would I tell one of our agents? You, you let the owner decide, give him all the facts. And we're going with the $700,000 offer, obviously. Yeah. I'm making half the money and I approached it the other way, but it was something I thought about just to be honest. That's, that's big money in front of your eyes, but you got to do the right thing. And I'm very proud of myself that I did that. And it literally happened two days ago. And just being real here, people think about these kind of things. And I made the right decision and I'm very happy that I did that. Forget about the money. You can't worry about it like that. Yeah, good for you, man. I commend you a lot. I think it's tough to make decisions like that. And we have to ask ourselves, I, I guess I look at ethics from a standpoint of who are you when nobody's watching? When nobody's right. paying attention, who are you? How do you behave? And that was good. That was good. I like that. So this next question that I like to ask is rolls into that. And it's, hey, how do you make high stake decisions? Because there was a high stake decision, right? So what did you do to make that? You don't just pull that off the cuff, right, man? I just thought about what would I want if it was me. And I thought about if my agent called me, what would I tell them to do? So I think you just step back and you try to consider as many aspects and angles as you can and put yourself in all the shoes that you can and say, what's the right thing to do, no matter how hard it is. And, and sometimes it's hard. It's not always easy, but I, I don't think people ever really regret making the right decision uh, in the long run. Because you know what? Now what, what's funny is I got the guy a higher price and it, it's looking like I'm going to be representing that buyer on another property and I'll, I'll get double commission anyways. Yeah. Isn't that funny? When we do the right thing, it usually comes back to bless us somewhere else. And you said it earlier, it's not right away. It could be 50 years down the road. But when we do the right thing, something typically comes back to bless us. This show is called Insider Secrets. I always like to ask people, hey, what are some secrets that you use pretty often that you think other people could benefit from? Great question. So many things, man. I, I got all these little things I come up with. Having lines in the water constantly having as many lines in the water as you can. And the bait is the value. What's the value you're putting out there? I think consistency and commitment. One time uh, I, I was around a very successful broker and they said, what's the key to your success? And, and just so quickly, he said, discipline. Mm. And I think that's all that's really needed to say most of the time. But thinking, how can you be different? How can you be unique? is very important to me. And then just getting around good people. Like, I don't need to own 100% of anything. I just want to have the value that I bring get taken care of. And that's what's led to us having multiple businesses. Like my value is bringing in leads and networking and in some ways having new ideas for these businesses. And for this business, that's 30%. For this business, it's 15. For this one, it's 60. We divide and conquer. And when you can get around that and have these really cool synergies with people, it's pretty amazing what you can accomplish. Be a foxhole person. You ever heard of that foxhole guy term? You know, yeah. who, who do you want in your foxhole when you're oh. at war? Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. Be that guy or that girl. Be the one that people want you in their foxhole and they know that you're going to have their back. And get around as many of those people as you can. I, I honestly just think the more people in this life that know 
and then trust you and the feeling is mutual, the better your life's going to be. I, yeah. I, I really believe that. Great advice, man. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. All right, let's shift gears a little bit here. We'll ask some easier questions now. So I know you're down in Austin. Austin's a great place. I've had a lot of great times in Austin. Tell me, though, your favorite tourist attraction. Oh, that's a good one. We call out Austin Opportunity City. Opportunities everywhere here. My favorite tourist attraction, uh-huh. I'd probably just say, yeah, me and my wife love to hike. There's a lot of great hiking trails out here. Just as many hiking trails as I can go on and get on, I'm interested. And in. it's an escape. It's a getaway. And you get to see nature, relax. So there's one called River Place here. Sure. And that's probably where I would you know, send someone if they wanted to come to Austin. Go check out River Place. Yeah. Nice. How about restaurant? Favorite restaurant? Favorite restaurant? Place called the. Nancy Sky Garden. Kind of food? It's Asian food. Okay, nice. Good. And then uh, best book you ever read, man? Trammel Crow, Master Developer. Man, oh man. What a great book. I read that years ago. Did you? Not a lot of people talk about it. I never Mm -hmm. heard anyone talk about it, but I loved it. You got to know who Trammell Crow was in order to like that book. I, I worked for Keller Williams Real Estate for years. And so Gary Keller worked for Trammell Crow and talked about Trammell Crow all the time. I had no idea. That's really yeah. cool. You know, get, obviously, he started Keller here in Austin. Right. I didn't know he worked for Trammell. That's really cool to know. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Hey, Matt, this has been a pleasure, man. I, I, I love these podcasts with so much energy and somebody who's just really nailing it. And I think you are. And I think you are from not just a business standpoint, but from a relationship standpoint, from an education piece and from a personal development piece. And that's what's really cool is the personal development piece. So I want to thank you for being here. Hey, listen, if people want to get a hold of you or they want to know about Austin, they want to know about you and your business, how do they go about get, reaching out to you? Yeah, I appreciate you saying that, man. And uh, you know, always trying to improve and learn from others. And everyone has something to teach somebody. But I'm the easiest guy in the world to get a hold of, man. Call my cell phone if you want. 512-914-4806. Matt Teifke at Gmail is my email. Check us out on YouTube, Teifke Real Estate. We're on every social media platform on Facebook. I'm super responsive. I always get back with people. I love to connect and help any way I can. Hey, I can testify to that. You do always get back to people. I appreciate that. Matt, thanks for being here today. I just want to tell all my listeners, hey, thanks for being here today. This was a great episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you walked away with a few golden nuggets. And please, I'm just going to ask you if you would just take a few minutes, run out to social media, follow us, follow me, follow Matt on social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and our our YouTube channel. And like us, love us, subscribe, help our ratings. But thanks for being here. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody next Tuesday. Hey, Matt, thank you. Let's go, everybody. Go get after it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for joining us for another great episode of Insider Secrets. As always, Insider Secrets is brought to you by My Core Intentions. Join us on social media and visit MyCoreIntentions.com where you can get expert coaching on all things multifamily investing and property management. We're looking forward to having you back again next week for more Insider Secrets.